Hi, my name's Susie Lishman. I'm a consultant histopathologist and I work at Peterborough City Hospital. I'm also Vice President of the Royal College of Pathologists. You may wonder what histopathology is. It's also known as cellular pathology and it means I, I, that I look at tissues and cells under the microscope to diagnose diseases like cancer. And I have a great interest in taking pathology out to the public to tell people what it's all about. This week at the Royal Society I've given 13 talks to schools and the public and my talks have been about medical myths and misconceptions. What I've been doing is been looking at things like old wives tales that people might have heard about their health and looking at the science behind them. The audience members have had voting pads so they've had the opportunity to give their opinion on each of these myths to say whether they think they're true or false. So it's been truly interactive and it's been fantastic to see almost immediate results. Well, it's quite difficult to tell medical fact from fiction, and we see so much stuff in the newspapers. There's always a health headline. Every day there's something we should or shouldn't do that will give us cancer or won't, and it's so hard to know what to believe. One of the ones that I, that I used was the question, if you take antibiotics, will it help you recover from a cold? And I'm pleased to say that over 80% of my audiences knew that antibiotics are no good against a cold at all. Because it's really important in these days of antibiotic resistance that people understand antibiotics work against bacteria, whereas colds are caused by viruses and antibiotics will have no effect. So not only will taking an antibiotic when you don't need one do you no good, it could do you some harm. Because if you take antibiotics when you don't need them, when you do need them, the bacteria may have become resistant and it won't work. And that's an increasing problem in this day and age. It's been described as a ticking time bomb. So it's really important that antibiotics are used appropriately. It's really important to be able to tell medical fact from fiction because people need to take responsibility for their own health and make decisions about everyday things that affect them and affect their health. One of the myths that I looked at was the five second rule. And this is a rule where if you drop some food on the floor, there's this, uh, a myth that if you pick it up within five seconds, then it's okay to eat it. Unfortunately, it's just not true. So no matter how nice a morsel you drop on the floor, bacteria can transfer onto it immediately in a split second. So even if you're super speedy, picking it up is probably too late. Now, all of us have done this at some point or another, and normally we don't get ill. But occasionally, there'll be a type of bacterium that's really virulent that can cause food poisoning. And food poisoning, although for most of us, it only lasts a couple of days and it's a bit unpleasant. It can put people into hospital and people even die. Around 500 people die every year in the UK from food poisoning. Scientists who investigated the five second rule also looked at how many bacteria there are in our houses and they looked at different areas of the kitchen. So the work surface in our kitchen has around 500 bacteria in just one square inch. Interestingly, a mobile phone has up to 250,000 bacteria, which is quite disgusting because we never clean them, we can't disinfect them, they go everywhere with us. We have them up against our face so they get grease and saliva. So what I've been telling my audience is today, don't lick your mobile phone. It's not a good idea. But one thing that's even worse is the bottom of your bag. And I thought initially that this meant the inside of a handbag with lots of tissues and, and chewing gum and things like that. But in fact, it means the bottom of the bag. There were over six million bacteria on the bottom of a handbag. And of course, this also applies to rucksacks and briefcases. You put them down on the carpet and bacteria from the carpet get onto the bottom of your bag. Maybe if you go into a public loo and there's nowhere to hang your bag, you put it on the floor. It's inevitable that we're going to pick up some bacteria onto our bags, but I think you should think twice before you take that bag and put it on the kitchen table when you get home. One of the great things about giving these talks is that I've spoken to over a thousand people this week and I've had the, advantage, uh, the opportunity to be a bit of a myth buster. I've been able to dispel some of these myths around food and stuff and I think those thousand people who sat through my talks will think twice before they pick something up from the floor and pop it in their mouths. Well, what one made me want to be a histopathologist? Well, obviously I trained as a doctor first and I loved working with patients and helping to make them better. But what I really liked was the basic science behind medicine. I was interested in what was happening at a cellular or a molecular level. And that's what pathology is all about. It's the science behind the cure. And so I went into pathology and I've loved it ever since. It's a bit like detective work. You're putting the different pieces of the jigsaw together to come to a conclusion. So although I do miss interacting with patients every day because I don't see them very often, I do feel that I'm making a significant contribution to their health because I'm making the diagnosis, perhaps of cancer, but I can tell their doctors what sort of cancer it is, 
maybe how far it's spread and what sort of drugs it might respond to. So I'm truly part of a multidisciplinary team that looks after patients in hospital. The really good thing about it being detective work and putting all these things together is it means it's always interesting. So every day I go to work, I don't know what I'm going to see next. So it keeps it fresh and I'm always excited to go to work. I don't sort of think, ooh, work, how awful. It's fun, it's exciting. So why would I recommend a career in science? Well, it was the best decision I ever made. You don't know what you're going to see every day. There's something new. You're helping people. You're making discoveries. It's interesting and it's fun. And if you're going to work for 40 years, you want a job that's fun, that you look forward to going to every day. <laughs> Just like me.